Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today I'm going to show you how I made a unicorn horn out of crochet. If you want to see how I made the horse doll that I used in this project, you can find the link in the description below, or you can find the pattern for this horn on Ravelry. I also made a life-sized horn to use as a costume piece. The method for both horns is the same, and I'll show you how I made both in this video. I know this horn doesn't exactly look crocheted, that's because I used a technique to make this horn look more realistic. I didn't do this with the costume horn, so if you prefer, you can just leave the horn with a crocheted texture if you like that look. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook, I'll be using a size E, you'll need some yarn, I'm just going to use a white worsted weight yarn, you'll also need some scissors, some craft wire, and something to use to cut your wire, and a yarn needle. That's all you'll need if you're just making a simple crochet texture horn. To make the more realistic style horn, you'll also need wax paper to protect your surfaces, Elmer's glue all, I used the quick dry formula, some Mod Podge, sandpaper or a sanding block, and some acrylic paint in the color of your choice. Basically, I'm going to make a spiral to create my unicorn horn. To do that, I'm going to begin with a long chain that's a little shorter than the length that I want the finished horn to be. The length of your chain may vary depending on how long you want to make your horn, the yarn that you use, the hook, and your tension. I'm going to chain 24, which ended up making a 7 inch horn. For the doll version, I'll just chain 8. This gave me a 2 inch horn. Once I finish my chain, I'll work stitches around the chain to create my spiral. The doll version is basically just the tip of the larger costume version, so I'll show you how to make that size later, after we finish the larger costume version. To make that horn, I need to make the bottom of the horn wider by creating long stitches at the bottom of the horn, and creating shorter and shorter stitches as I move up towards the top of the horn. Also, I'll work my stitches not into any of the stitches of the chain, but around the whole chain, so that I can slide the stitches around on the chain and bunch up the stitches to form the spiral. At the bottom of the horn, I'll begin using treble crochets. So for the first stitch, I'll just chain three to count as my first treble. Then into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to treble crochet, so yarn over twice and pull up a loop through that third chain from the hook, and pull a loop through two of the loops on the hook three times. Now I have my first two stitches made. I'm going to treble crochet 30 more times. This time though, I'll work around the entire chain. So as you can see, when you work the stitches around the entire chain, you can move the stitches along the chain freely. This is the key to making the spiral. I'll show you once I've made a few more stitches. Okay, I've finished with 16 stitches so far. In order to form the spiral, I'm going to pull all of my stitches to the bottom of the chain, bunching them up tightly. Now there should be a circle formed out of the stitches at the bottom of the chain. Now I'll create another 16 treble crochet stitches, and bunch those stitches at the bottom of the chain as well. Alright, I finished my 32 treble crochets, and bunched the stitches tightly along the bottom of the chain, to begin to form the spiral shape. 
Now I'm going to begin creating half treble crochet stitches, which are just a little bit shorter than a treble crochet. That way the width of the horn begins to slowly taper towards the top. To make a half treble, I'll yarn over two times, pull up a loop around the chain, then pull a loop through two of the loops on my hook, then pull a loop through the remaining three loops on the hook. Okay, there's the first half treble. Now I need to make 31 more. and bunch them up at the bottom of the chain just like before. Alright, I've finished with 32 of my half treble crochets. Now I'll continue with even shorter stitches using double crochets. So yarn over, pull up a loop around the chain, then pull through two loops on the hook twice to make a double crochet. And then make 31 more, pulling the stitches to the bottom of the chain to continue forming the spiral. Then continue making smaller and smaller stitches all the way to the end of the chain. Next I made 32 half double crochets by yarning over once, pulling up a loop around the chain, then pulling through all three loops on the hook. Then I finished with 32 basic single crochet stitches. If the chain is a little too long, you can kind of finesse it by moving the stitches around until the chain is completely covered in stitches. Or else you can just add a few extra single crochet stitches if you want. If the chain is a little too short, you can just add fewer stitches. Now to finish the spiral, I'm going to add a pointed tip to the end. To do this, first I'll chain 4. Then into the second chain from the hook, I'll slip stitch. Then slip stitch into the next two chains. Then to finish, I'll slip stitch around the post of the last single crochet stitch that I made around the foundation chain. Then I'll cut off a long tail. Oh, and before I forget, let's really quickly make the doll sized horn. For this one, I'll chain 8, then I'll chain 1 to count as the first single crochet. Then into the second chain from the hook, single crochet, then single crochet another 30 times, pulling the stitches to the bottom of the chain every once in a while to form the spiral.
Then at the end of the chain, chain four more, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, into the next two chains, then slip stitch around the last single crochet stitch in the foundation chain, around the post. Once the spiral is made, use some craft wire in the middle of the spiral to keep the horn standing up. First, make the armature for the horn. Fold down the end of the wire about an inch, creating a loop on this side of the wire. Then, pull out a couple of inches more than you think the horn will be. It's better that the wire be longer than the horn rather than shorter. I'll make my wire about 10 inches long. Then, I'll twist another 10 inches of wire around the first 10 inches that I pulled out, creating a loop on the other side. Twist that all the way to the other side, just underneath the first loop. And twist a couple more inches of wire down in the other direction to fasten the loop. Then cut off the wire on this side. Remember to be careful with the sharp end. Next, I'll twist the coil around the wire, so that the wire is threaded through the middle of the coil. I'll start at the top of the horn, to make sure the end of the wire matches up with the tip of the horn. To keep the spiral in place on the wire, I'll pin the tip of the horn to the loop at the end of the wire. Then, I'll begin to twist the yarn around the wire. Once the wire is threaded through the spiral, tighten the coil around the wire by twisting the coil more tightly. At the bottom of the spiral, twist the wire into a circle that matches the circumference of the bottom of the horn. And then use the tail end of the yarn to fasten the wire in place and to stitch over any remaining visible wire. First. I'll sew the tip of the horn around the loop of the wire at the top. Then I'll stitch around the wire all the way down the horn.
Then at the bottom, stitch around the circle of wire and around the loop at the end of the wire to attach the bottom of the horn to the wire. Then I'll do the same thing with the shorter doll size horn. Next, I'm going to use my glue to harden the horn, to give it a more realistic look. This step is optional. I didn't do this with my full-sized horn. The larger size takes a bit longer to do, so I'll show you using the tiny doll-sized horn just to make things faster. First, I'm going to put down a piece of waxed paper to protect the surface that I'm working on. Then I'm going to cover the entire surface of the outside of the horn with glue. Now I'll let that dry until it hardens. So I'll set it down on the wax paper. Now let's come back to this tomorrow and let it dry overnight. Now my horn is fully dried and as you can see it has hardened a lot. Next I'm going to sand the horn a little bit to try to kind of smooth it out. I'll also use this piece of sandpaper wrapped around a thin wooden dowel to get into the ridges of the horn. I'm just going to deepen the groove of the spiral a little bit with this. Next, I'm going to coat the horn in another layer of glue, but this time I'll use the Mod Podge. Now let that sit until it's completely dry. This time, I'm just going to wait a couple of hours since there's not as much glue. When that layer of Mod Podge is dry, I'll repeat the process until the surface of the horn has a texture that I like. First, I'll add another layer of Mod Podge. Then I'll lightly sand the surface of the horn to smooth it out a little bit. Then I'll add another layer of Mod Podge and keep repeating that process until you like the texture of the surface of the horn. I did this four times, but you could keep doing it to smooth out the horn even more if you want. Now that I'm done sanding and gluing the horn, and I'm happy with the texture, it's ready to be painted. I have some silver acrylic paint here that I'm going to use to give the horn a magical ethereal vibe. I'll paint a couple of coats on my horn to make sure that it's completely covered in the paint.
Once the last coat of acrylic paint dries, if you like, you could seal the horn with more Mod Podge to protect the paint, but I'm going to leave it as is, because I find that sealing it takes away from the metallic shine of the silver paint. And now the horn is complete. Now I just need to sew the horn to my pony to make a unicorn. I'll use my yarn needle to poke some holes in the bottom of the horn, Then I'll use some yarn that's the same color as the pony to sew the horn to the doll's head. I really love how this turned out, and you can easily use this technique to make any kind of horn. You could make the horns longer or shorter or thicker, or you could even bend the wire to shape the horn however you like while the first layer of glue is drying, and get some really unique looking horns. If you use any of these techniques to make a horn of your own, I'd love to see your interpretation. You can find all my social media links in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful, if you did give it a like and share it on social media. And if you'd really like to help out the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. You can get some pretty cool perks through Patreon, like seeing my videos early, access to some of my prototype patterns, and discounts in my Ravelry store, depending on your level of donation. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You could also subscribe and click the bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!